In 2015, Google announced that the Dart VM would not be built into Chrome. This was an impactful day for me because from Dart's inception, I had hoped that we'd have a first-class alternative to JavaScript for web clients. Don't get me wrong, I've written a ton of JavaScript, but that doesn't mean that I necessarily like the language. TypeScript, although not something a browser can simply execute as is, has done wonders for me, but I'm still left yearning for other alternatives. Enter WebAssembly. When I'd first heard of WebAssembly, my feelings weren't of excitement. I'd written a tiny bit of assembly in college, and the idea of shoving assembler instructions into dev tools sounded like a step backwards. Thankfully, WebAssembly is not simply shoving assembler instructions into Chrome or Firefox. WebAssembly is a language that, similar to TypeScript compiling down to JavaScript, is targeted by another language as the build target. For this example, we'll use Golang and we'll target WebAssembly as a platform and architecture, but there are other languages that can target WebAssembly in the build process too. Rust and C++ to name a few. We're going to start by coding a very, very basic Go program that targets WebAssembly during the build process. Let's start out by printing hello world to the console. Let's start by creating a new directory to house our project. Now we can cd into our newly created directory and run go mod init and then your package name. I'll use github.com slash bratcypert slash go dash wasm. We'll create a new file named main.go. Let's open that up in our editor and add the following to it. You'll notice that there's nothing special going on in this Go file. That's not always the case, but for this example we have some extremely normal looking Go code. In fact, let's go ahead and go run this to make sure it works. Great, so you should have some output that says hello world in your console. This program will actually work as a WebAssembly program as well once we change our target platform and uh, architecture. There are a couple more steps that we'll have to do as well. Um, and let's go ahead and take care of those now. We have to add a WebAssembly support file to run our code. Thankfully, Golang ships with one. Uh, we should just be able to run cp and the following, and that will copy the file that Go ships with into our current directory. Next, we'll need to set up an HTML file to be rendered by the browser. Additionally, we'll include some JavaScript to load and execute our WebAssembly program. Let's go ahead and create this file and modify it so it looks like the following. The two script tags are the most interesting part of this HTML file. Our first script loads the wasm exec.js file that we copied in from our Go directory, while our second script fetches and executes our WebAssembly instructions. We don't have those yet, so we have one step left to go, and that's to build out our main WebAssembly file. We can do that by simply setting a few flags before running our build command. Here you'll also notice that we're specifying our output file name too. With everything set up, you can serve this directory over an HTTP server however you see fit. If you need recommendations, I really like the goexec package that allows us to execute arbitrary go commands, and in this case, we'll use that to execute listen and serve. To install, you can run go git dash u github.com slash surecool slash goexec, or just type what you see on the screen. And then to run a simple HTTP server, we can do the following. Now that our server is up and running, we can open our web browser to localhost 8080, or whatever server address you chose, and you should see a blank white screen. For now, open your DevTools and search for hello world in the console output. If it's there, you've successfully set up and ran a Go program using WebAssembly as a build target. As far as demos go, this is probably one of the most underwhelming demos that we could build. We're about to fix that, and don't worry, it's still nothing crazy. Our plan is to add a couple of elements to our web page via WebAssembly and then set some properties on them. Let's go ahead and start by modifying our Go code to include an import of syscall slash JS. More on that in a moment. We'll then add some code to our main function. Uh, we will declare a variable called document, and we'll um, assign that equal to js.global get document, and this will get the document uh, from the web page. Create a new variable, I'll call it p for paragraph tag, and we'll set that equal to document.call create element p. Um, this will 
call create element on the document object to create a new element of type p. And then below that, we'll set inner HTML and class name. We'll replicate these steps for a style tag as well, and we'll add some CSS. So yet again, document.call, create element style, and then do styles.set, enter HTML, and let's add this CSS right here. Finally, we need to make sure that we add these new elements to our HTML document. We've created them, so now let's call document.get, and let's get the head for the CSS tag, and the body for the paragraph tag, and then we want to call the append child method for both of those. With our changes in place, we can rebuild our WebAssembly instructions again. Here's the command. And relaunch our server via goexec. We should be able to open our web browser and see hello wasm from go in a black box in the document. Um, if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. It helps me know what type of content you like to see and make sure that you get notifications for any new videos that I put out. Thanks again. Oh, wait, I almost forgot. Syscall, yeah, let's talk about that for a moment. So the syscall.js package is a package um, that's a part of Go's core, and it gives access to the WebAssembly host environment when targeting um, JavaScript or WebAssembly as a build target. For this reason, it's important to keep in mind that you don't want to import syscall.js if you're building a normal Go server or command line tool or anything that's not targeting WebAssembly as a build target. Finally, uh, this API is experimental, so it is uh, exempt from the Go compatibility promise. So the more you use this, the more you should be aware that the underlying, underlying API may change at some point. Sorry that I almost forgot to talk about syscall. Thanks for sticking around to the end to hear it through. Have a great day.